All right, uh, we're just gonna do a really, really quick warm up, but we are starting with cardio each round, so I'm not gonna make the workout uh, or the warm up too long. So uh, let's just get started here together with a little bit of jogging on the spot. Get the knees up nice and high. Just gonna start getting mentally and physically into the workout here. All right, from here, we're gonna go down to right knee on the floor, left knee on the floor, right knee up, or right foot up, and left foot up. And then repeat, right knee down, left knee down, right foot up, left foot up. This will come up in our workout later on. So let's just get this movement down now. You'll have both knees on the ground at one point before you stand up. All right, let's switch the leg we're going down on. So down on the left knee first, and then right knee, left foot up, and right foot up. So these are called knee get-ups, and we'll be seeing them again in our first round. All right, stand up here, feet hip width apart, knees nice and straight, slide the hands down, the ankles towards the floor, and just get a nice stretch through the back of the legs. We're gonna walk the hands out until we're in a nice plank position. And lower yourself down to the floor, flat down. From here, hands by the shoulders. And we're just gonna press our torso up, chest up nice and tall. Keep the abs and the glutes engaged here. We're just looking to stretch out the abs, the hip flexors. And we'll be actually finishing off our workout with this movement pattern. Press the hips back, and we're gonna sit down, uh, hips between the ankles, reaching the hands forward on the floor to get a little bit of a stretch, uh, just underneath the armpit there into the back of the shoulders. Press back up to all fours. We're gonna kick both feet out to the side. So nice wide stance. I always like to warm up in this lateral position for the inner thigh. And just kind of rocking the hips back and forth, straightening one knee as you slightly bend the opposite. We have one round dedicated to the adductors today. All right, walk it in. Stand on up, and just a little bit of wrist work. So interlock the fingers together, nice, big, full wrist circles. This will be our last one here for the warm up. So every round we'll start with 90 seconds of cardio. You can either grab a rope and skip for that time. You can do what's called the Jackson Five. Well, you're gonna do five jumping jacks, regular jumping jacks, and then five skier jacks where they're out to the front. So I'd be five of those, and then five star jacks, jump and land, jump and land. And once you've got the five star jacks, then you go back to five regular jacks. So that's the jacks in five. The other option is to do a bodyweight squat, step back into a lunge, other side, and then squat again. And just try to keep the pace going, nice and steady and quick, to keep the heart rate up. So those are your three options for the cardio. You choose each round which one you want to do. I'm gonna get our timer started, and then the workout shall begin. Also, I just need to turn our music up a bit here. All right, hopefully you guys can hear that. We got some feedback on previous videos that the yeah, music wasn't quite loud enough, so I'll try to address that for you. Okay guys, grab your rope if you're skipping, otherwise Jackson 5 or the squats and lunges. I'll actually do the Jackson 5 for those that don't have the rope. Skipping is pretty straightforward. 90 seconds here, we're starting in 6, 5, 4, 3, enjoy your workout guys. Here we go, 5 jumping jacks, 1, 2, Three, four, five, skiers. One, two, three, four, 
five, start back, jumping up and out, three, four, five, Woo. back to regular jacks. If those star jacks are a little too much, skiers, that's fine. Instead, you can do seal jacks. Three, four, five. Here's the seal jack. Do that instead of the star. I think my head's getting cut off in the camera here. One, two, three, four, five. Skiers, you keep going. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit here. And star jacks or the seal jacks. Three, four, five. Regular jacks. One, two, three, four, five. Skiers. Less than 30 seconds to go. Three, four, five. Or the seals. Three, four, five. Last round. Two, three, four, five. Skiers. We got 10 seconds. Both of the heart rates picked up. Two, three, four, and five. Okay. We're working on the quads this first round. We're going to start with a split squat. We're working for 40 seconds. Get your right leg forward. Lunge position. No jumping here. We're just going to go down and up. We're on this one leg for 40 seconds. And then we'll do the other leg. And then we'll kick it up to the higher intensity exercise. So this is the lower intensity for the quad. I'm gonna show from the side, you keep going. So torso, woo, excuse me, torso is fairly upright. Notice at the bottom, my back knee is under my hip. Try to avoid that position. Not that it's unsafe, it's just a lot easier. Four, three, two, one. Switching legs. So left leg forward. Right leg back. Let's get ready. We've got a nice 15 second transition time. Lots of rest and recovery in this workout. Here we go. We're here for 40 seconds. Nice and tall. If you have pain in your back knee when you do lunges, you can get a little bit of a lean forward, get more weight over top of your front leg, and that will decrease the amount of pressure you're gonna put into your back knee. And that might make your pain magically disappear. If there's still pain, then maybe we need to find an alternative. Maybe do some squats instead. Hard to correct everybody over video. Okay, the higher intensity, we're gonna do a jump squat. And then we're gonna go down into that knee, get up. Knee down, knee down, up, up, and then jump. We're here for 40 seconds. Here we go, jump, right knee down, left knee down, right foot up, left foot up. Jump and switch up, left knee down. So just switch the leg that's going down to the floor each time. If you really want to work the quads, turn it into a little bit of a speed game. How many can you get through in 40 seconds? And really explode on the jump. See how high you can get. I'm trying to see how much of my torso I can get out of the camera. Nice work, everybody. All right, that's it. Just one set. We're gonna go into a quad stretch now. 45 seconds per leg. Have a seat on the floor. We're gonna bring our legs to 90, 90 degrees. I want you to fully bend your back leg. In this case, it's my right knee that's behind me. I'm gonna walk out to my left, drop my left elbow to the floor. And then I'm going to squeeze my right glute and push my pelvis forward. That should put a nice stretch into the quad. If you don't feel the quad stretch, make sure that back knee is fully bent. Pull it with your hand if you need to. If you can't
can't get into this position, then just hold a regular quad stretch, lying on the floor or standing up. At the end of the 45 seconds, we're gonna go to the other side. All right, we got 10 seconds to get there. So flip the legs over to the opposite side. Now my left leg is behind me. Fully bend the left knee. Walk around to the right. Draw up the right elbow to the floor. Squeeze the glutes and push the hips forward. So we're stretching out those quads that we just worked. Keep holding there. I realized in a few of the previous workouts, I didn't always have time to get to a nice long stretch. They often be like 15 second holds or so. So I intentionally built this workout to make sure we spend a lot of time on our stretching. Which also brings the intensity of the workout down. At the end of this timer here, that's the end of round one. All right. We got one minute to get ready for the next round. So we're back to the cardio. Grab your skipping rope, Jackson 5, or the squat and lunge. I'm gonna do the squat and lunge this time to show what that one looks like in case you're not too sure. For the next round, we're gonna work our last. This is the tricky one. If you have an exercise ball, you're gonna be kneeling down, placing your elbows on top of the ball, and drawing or trying to pop the ball. So you're squeezing your elbows hard into the ball. I'll chew more on that when we get there. This is the one where if you have dumbbells, if you have kettlebells, if you have a resistance band, you can take those out and you can work on your rows instead of doing the ball squeeze. If you have none of that equipment, you can modify the ball squeeze with just your body and I'll show you that when we get there. We've got cardio coming up guys. I'm gonna do the squats and lunges. Here we go. So squat, lunge. I will stretch all the way down there. Lunge, squat. Lunge, lunge, and we're just repeating for the full 90 seconds. Squat, lunge, lunge. You can be doing your skip rope, you can be doing your Jackson 5. You can also change it up. If you find your quads get too tired doing this, then feel free to go to some skipping at any point. Whew, where was I? Oh yeah. Almost forgot what I was doing there. Squats and lunges. We're over halfway done. I want you guys to keep going. I'm going to show the second exercise that's coming up. So after we do that ball squeeze, or you do your rows, then we're gonna go into a Superman plank. For a Superman plank, it's like a regular plank, where you're gonna walk your hands as far in front of your face as you can. You're gonna hold that position. That's gonna make our lats have to work to prevent us from falling forward onto our face. Cardio is done in two, one, bring it down. Ropes away, grab your exercise ball, Grab your weights. If you're doing weights, again, bent over position and rows. We're working for 40 seconds here. I'm gonna show the option with just body weight. So kneeling down, elbows are placed on top of your thighs or knees. Here we go. And we're gonna just squeeze as hard as we can the elbows into the knees. You can hold it for about five seconds and then release and then reactivate. If you got the ball, same thing where you're pushing into the ball. You'll feel a little bit more give here. So you'll probably be able to feel the muscles contract a little bit easier. If you have elbows of steel, you could also do the military crawl, pulling yourself along the floor on your elbows. But most of you probably won't have the space for that in your home. All right, we are gonna to go to our Superman plank for 40 seconds, and then we come back to that ball squeeze. All right, Superman plank, three, two, one, hands up front. You might notice 
my back is a little bit rounded when I do these, that's going to help protect my low back from crashing. So it's not a perfectly neutral spine, but it's slightly rounded. You can do this with a perfectly neutral spine if there's no pressure in your low back. I just like to go slightly rounded and not have to worry about it. If that's too tough, you can go to your knees and probably slide a little bit further out. That's time. All right, you're right back into the squeeze. Or get your dumbbells, you're back to rowing. Three, two, and one. Here we go. Build up pressure for five seconds. Pull, 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 pull. Release. Catch your breath. And repeat. Draw the ball in. See if you can pop it. If you manage to pump a white lion ball, you win a prize. But we will inspect it for scissor punctures or knife wounds. It's got to be a true elbow puncture. Almost there. Squeeze to the end here. Hold it. Four, three, two, and time. Very nice. All right. We're going to go into a lat stretch. We're going to stretch out the lats now. So, we're going to stand up nice and tall. We're going to lift our right hand overhead. Our right leg is going to come behind the left. You can also do it just standing normal. That's up to you. Grab the right wrist with the left hand. And pull. We're going into this crescent moon position. So I'm trying to make a bow shape with my body. The main focus here is pulling that wrist over that way. That's going to create the stretch through the lats. Keep holding here. Try to breathe through this one. If you can't, just come up, breathe, and then reset. Three, two, and one, good. We're gonna head over to the other side. Left arm is coming up. Grab a hold of that wrist. Pull it over, left hand, or sorry, left foot. Goes behind the right leg. Keep holding and keep breathing. I want you guys to keep this up for another 30 seconds. I'm gonna talk about uh, the second exercise in the next round. So the second exercise of the hamstring round is called Nordic Curls. This is where you're going to want to use the couch or a friend or the dog or something heavy, a barbell, something where you can hook your heels under if possible. I'm just going to use the brick wall because I can kind of get my feet under there. So I'm going to put my heels under the wall and I'm going to lean forward and then pull myself back up. But my hips stay in position, so I'm not bending the waist. I'm hinging forward from my knees. A little bit trickier to show this one uh, from the front. Hopefully that makes sense. Oh, oh, oh. I gotta reset our timer, guys, because I don't want you to miss out on that time. All right. So, uh, we're gonna get into our cardio for 90 seconds first. And then we'll be going into the hamstring round. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Jackson five, squats and lunges, or take out your skipping rope. If you have a skipping rope at home, but you really don't know how to use it, go take a look at our skipping video from this past Saturday. Um, we've got like about a 25 30 minute skipping workout, but at the end of the video, I go through some of the basics of skipping, like a skipping tutorial. So if you don't know what you're doing, go check that video out. Fast forward to the end, watch the last five minutes or so, and you'll get a tutorial on how to do your basic skip. 
if you know basic skipping, and you want your kids to know how to do more like fancy, funky stuff, then that's what that whole workout was. We did eight different skipping patterns for the whole workout. So watch that video and build on your skipping uh, prowess. When we get to the end of this skipping, or the end of your cardio, maybe you're doing the Jackson 5, then we're gonna lie down on the floor on our backs. And we're gonna do some heel walkouts. Four, three, two, and one. All right, we're going into heel walkouts. This is the hamstring round. So, on our backs, feet by the butt. Get the butt up. You're gonna walk as far out as you can on your heels until you're at the point where your legs might be straight, but don't let your butt touch the floor. Walk back in, keep the hips high, and then walk back out. The further out you walk, or the longer you spend on one foot, the harder the exercise will be. So you can find your own intensity here. We're here for 40 seconds. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. We got four, three, two, one. All right, guys, we're into that Nordic curl. I just grabbed a bag so I can show you from the side. Try to get your heels anchored. Here we go. So, I'm going to move forward from my waist or hips. I can't go very far because the back doesn't weigh very much. Come back up. I'm trying not to bend up my hips. If I can, avoid that. I want the hips to lead the movement. And you're going to feel the hamstrings fire up. You may also get some cramping on this one. That's fairly common. So just be aware of that. If you go too far and you can't get back up, just lower yourself to the floor. Press yourself back up, and then repeat. Hopefully you've got a couch to anchor you or something where you can really pull up on with the heels. All right, that's your Nordic curl. Not very good demonstration there with that bag, but hopefully you got the idea. We're back on the four heel walkouts for a second round. Here we go. All the way up, keep the hips up. If you want to challenge yourself, just stay out here and just alternate legs, but never walk back in. Just keep your legs straight out, butt off the ground. That's a nice way to get those hamstrings working. Sometimes you gotta get creative with body weight to work those muscles on the back side of the body. Good. All right, hopefully you felt the hamstrings working there. We are gonna go into a hamstring stretch. 45 seconds per leg. So, standing up, you're gonna take your right leg and just step forward a little bit, turn the left toes out slightly, and we're gonna stick our butt out behind us as we slide our hands down the front leg. Keep the right knee nice and straight. So from the side, I'm staggered, butt goes back, chest stays tall, slide down the leg. You should feel a stretch in the hamstring on the right side. If not, just play around with your angles, how far your feet are apart from each other, until you get a stretch in the hamstring. You can also lift your toes up to get your calf stretched as well. Get a little extra work in there. On the bell, we switch legs. All right, come on up. Shake that leg out if you need. We're going to the other side. So left leg steps forward. Right foot turns up slightly, hinge down, and slide down the leg. You 
can add the toe raise if you want to get a little bit more stretch in the calf. That's up to you. If your left foot is forward, think of pulling your left foot or your left hip to the wall behind you. That'll increase the stretch for you. Just under 10 seconds left. All right, come on up. Okay, one more minute, and then we are into our next round. We're halfway through the workout, guys. So the next round is going to be for the pecs. So we have push-ups and an iron cross plank for the more challenging exercise. Uh, the iron cross plank is like a regular plank, but your arms are as wide as you're comfortable going. So that might be here for you. That might be out there for you. But we're holding that for as long as we can up to the 40 second mark. Uh, we're coming up to cardio here in 15 seconds. I'm gonna go back to the Jackson 5 in case you haven't done that one yet and you can't remember what it is. So Jackson 5 and then we're into push-ups. Four, three, two, and one. Here we go. Round four, guys. One, two, three, four, five. Skiers. One, two, three, four, five. Star jumps. Four and five. Regular jacks. One, two, three, four, five. Skiers. One, two, three, four, five. Star jumps. One. Two, three, four, five. Regular. One, two, three, four, five. Skiers. Again, if that star jump is a little too tough or you're getting tired, seal jacks. Two, three, four, five. You can even do silly jacks if you want. Those are fine. As long as we're moving, guys, that's what matters. If you do the silly jack, then you need to post the video you're doing it on Instagram for us. So we can see who's got the silliest silly jack. Four, five, coming up for the last 10 seconds. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's it. All right, guys, get ready for push-ups. 40 seconds of them. You choose your intensity. Feet, knees, pike push-up, or off the wall if you need to, or your couch. Our hands are sliding over the shoulder height, just outside shoulder width. That'll be our position to start from. If you want to challenge yourself on the push-ups, you can go to a narrow push-up. Hands shoulder width apart, and now the elbows go straight back and straight up. Your pecs can't do as much work here, which means your shoulders and your triceps need to do more of the work. But try to avoid that with the elbows. Keep them in if you can. All right. I have a cross plank. Arms as wide as you can get, at shoulder height, fingers facing out most likely. See how long you can go. Here we go. Make sure your elbows are slightly bent on knees. If you lock your elbows out, that could be a recipe for disaster. So please keep your elbows bent. If you're sliding across the floor, that's normal. You gotta try and fight that slide. All right. That was a tough one, I hope you like that. We're 
back to the push-ups. 40 seconds. And then we can stretch our pegs out. That would be nice. Three, two, and one. Here we go. Seconds left. 
Again, I mentioned before, I generally like that reverse lunge a little bit better. If you prefer a forward lunge, go for it. If you have knee problems, I recommend the backwards stepping lunge, the reverse lunge. But you can do forwards. Our body's designed to do that too. And time. All right, guys. We're gonna start with a split side plank. So get down on the floor, right elbow on the ground. We're sideways. Your left leg is gonna be straight out in line with the body. Your right leg out in front of you. The further more in front of you it is, the harder it is. Hips up, and we're in a side plank here. If that's too tough, slide the right leg back towards your front or your, um, your left leg. If it's too easy, feel free to lift your right foot right up off the ground and hold it there. Make sure your left knee is slightly bent. Don't let that knee lock out. We're here for the full 40, and then we'll go to the other side. So you're probably saying this is more of a shoulder and a weak exercise, and it is, but you should be feeling the inner thigh as well of that top leg. Other side, uh, we got left elbow down, right leg straight out, left leg out to the front. Three, two, and one, bring it up. Hips high, hips forward. Slide the feet closer together if it's hard. Get that foot out there if it's easy. Bring it up in the air if you're a superstar today. I am not a superstar today. I'm preparing for another full week of two workouts a day. Which is an absolute wonderful change for me and I am so grateful for them. I've done more workouts in the last week than probably in the last six months combined. Just a factor of where things are at. Okay, if you have a ball, you'll want to have that handy. Have a seat on the floor. Put the ball between the knees, seated position or lying down. Squeeze and hold for five, release and repeat. If you don't got a ball, hands can go between your knees. You can squeeze your hands. If you have a pillow on the couch nearby, towel, dog, anything nearby that you can squeeze between your knees. That's what we're after. You'll notice the knees are close to 90 degrees position, which will give you a bit better leverage than being really close in or really far out. Five second holds. Feel the inner thighs burning as you squeeze it up. Release, and that's it. All right, hopefully you felt the inner thighs working in that round, we're gonna stretch them out. We're gonna do an adductor glide. So come to a kneeling position. Left leg is straight out to the side. And we're gonna glide our whole body towards that left foot. But your torso will stay facing the front. And this will stretch out either your hamstrings, or your adductors, or both. You can stay in the stretch, or you can floss back and forth like I'm doing. Either one is fine. Ten seconds, and then we'll switch sides. We just got one round to go after this, everybody. All right, switch legs. Okay, right leg up to the side. And here we go. You keep going. When we're done the next round, we don't need to stretch it out because you've already done your stretching. Nice, 
deep lateral lunge movement here to really open up into the inside of those hips. Four, three, two, and time. Okay guys, we got one round to go. We're starting with the cardio again. I'm gonna do some more skipping because I really enjoy that. I've only done it once. What's coming up? All right. I'm gonna demonstrate our next exercise. Not necessarily because I need to, but I wanna avoid that awkward silence where we're waiting for this round to start. So the X crunch will be your first exercise in the core round. Lying on the back. My body is in an X position on the floor. I'm gonna lift my opposite arm and leg. I'm gonna come up and touch my foot as high as I can back to the floor. And then back to the floor. So we're switching or alternating sides each time. And I'll explain the second exercise when we get there. All right, guys, last round of cardio. Three, two, one. Here we go. 90 seconds of work. Try to go slowly on the way down. 
If you just say to yourself, oh, then you're gonna miss out on a lot of that work. Controlling down when you're going in the same direction as gravity in all your exercises. Nice work, guys. Less than 10. Let's get up there. That's it. All right, we're gonna stretch up the abs. So, we're gonna go into a cobra or sphinx or upward dog. I'm not familiar enough with my yoga to differentiate between them. But we're gonna go face down on the floor. We did this in the warm up. Hands by the shoulders. Press your torso up. Make sure the glutes are engaged, the abs are engaged. That's to help prevent too much uh, pressure at the whole back. But that should put a bit of a stretch in the abs. If you don't like that stretch and you want to stretch your abs out, then you've got your ball handy. Sit on the ball. Let the head go back, arms out. And you'll get a really nice stretch to the whole front of the torso. So that's a good option if the uh, upward dog doesn't feel too good in your low back for you. All right, we're going to transition to a downward dog right now. So from the upward dog, or whatever we just did, transfer up to downward dog. Final stretch of the day, head between the shoulders. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but I guess so. Head between the elbows. Drive your heels down towards the floor. Trying to keep the knees as straight as you can. Spine as straight as you can. Stretching out the calves, the hamstrings. And letting that heart rate come down. Great work today, everybody. Thanks for being a part of it, and uh, we'll see you again at the next one.